There are so many cool tools in Gravity Sketch, both uh, CAD based, so splines, uh, what we call nerves, and subdivision modeling tools. So one of them that I want to show you is the Revolve tool. So I use it a lot in these kind of like organic, uh, but mechanical designs. Um, and the one that I'm gonna look at today is the Revolve tool. So if you look at this little quick design, you, you can see that there's tons and tons of repeats and lots of things like this, which is like a basically a wheel. And if you're a car designer or if you do a lot of industrial design, you, you know, you, you're going to want this kind of shape a lot. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make um, some components that are using this, this tool, the Revolve tool, and I'll, and I'll show you how I'll make something like that. So say you are wanting to uh, just make one, there's no, no symmetry or anything like that, you basically just make one wheel shaped thing in, in this direction here. So first of all, let's call the tool. So we go up into our, uh, we use our, whether it's um, left or right handed, obviously it's up to you. So it's your non-dominant hand, I'm left handed, so it's this one, my right hand. These are our tools. And you're going to find it if you switch over to the uh, this one. So you've got the top one, you've got ink, and then all of the more modeling, then all of the primitives. And it's actually in that second one there. And what you want here is custom revolve. Okay, now I'm just going to set a couple of things because first of all, it's uh, it, it needs its basic settings changes. So you hit custom result, revolve, and then you look in here and you've got an option here for mixed input mode, which is much more um, like a draw in base mode, or you want point mode, which means each point we lay down gives us um, a, a little bit of a definition of the shape that we want. And also down here, we've got a round revolve, eight sided, six sided, four sided, three sided, and a star. We don't want any of that. We just want what we've got round revolve. You could go low poly and that will give you a very blocky thing, but we're okay just, just going with the smooth one. And we can just increase the input smoothing a little bit there. So now we've got that, what we need to do is we need to think about the axis. So as it happens, this is on the one that I want, so it's on the right axis there, which isn't a problem. If you didn't want that, if you wanted it on one of the other ones, all you do is, with your non-dominant hand, if you just half press the trigger when you're near to one of the um, axis lines, it, you can then adjust with the angle of your hand, you can snap it to the one that you want. So I want to say go green and vertical like that on the, on the Y, and then you just hit the um, the front trigger, non-dominant hand, and it gives you the axis. So I just want it on this front one. I don't want wheels as such, I want components. So I'm gonna line it up with the blue axis there, um, just get and, get and get it roughly. It doesn't actually matter where we put ours for this because it, it's gonna be one piece that we move around. So I'm just gonna snap it until it's pretty much in line with that front axis there. So now what I want to do is there seems to be um, it feels more like a big disc, doesn't it? So what we want to do is just lay one point down like so. So I've laid a single point down, and now what I want to do is lay another one down. So I'm gonna come down here and lay down two points. And now I've got the start of the shape that I want here. Now it's actually got a thickness there. Ignore the, the semi, you know, the transparency. Um, but let's have a look at why we've got thickness. So we'll just undo it. And we'll go back to our settings and we'll look again at custom revolve here and we've got here a thickness now we don't want that at all so i didn't spot that when i started it but it's a good one it was already set on so i just want that down to nothing so when we go back now and we and we tap one point and then we come to our second point there we go so it's a much more predictable shape than um, like a thin shape without a, an extrusion so we want something like a wheel trim really here. So this is the back, let's say that this is the back of it. And then we can come, uh, put another point down so it'll give us a harder turn. And then we'll come forward and then another point, so a harder turn. And then we'll come in a little bit. As you can see, it's come in quite a little bit with this point. Uh, you can edit this in a minute, which I'll show you. You can see the revolve uh, shape here. 
uh, because of the points so we can just keep adding points how we want them um, and then we'll do I will come back out here something like this and two so that it gives us a hard edge then all the way out another one like so let's just get it right on the edge like that and then we'll go in and we'll go nice and tight in the in the inside here and then back inside so we don't see any of it as we're working and then just hit blue and there is your revolved item so a good thing to do at this point is come off that tool because now you're finished with that tool and obviously i've done it in red so it doesn't really help so um in a grip hold it hit the palette and we'll change it to one of the materials that i've got or we can just do another one so we could do say reflective and we could go gray so it gives or, or, or gray of some type let's just go completely flat gray or oh, it's bluey gray there uh, if you want it to look metallic obviously like what we've done here um, we've, we've used a much more metallic look so you could go and say maybe gloss or clay is quite a good one so gloss is good and then just change the color again so like something like that and now you've got a very mechanical looking revolved item but say for example that isn't quite what you want maybe you need so that would be useful for uh joints here it could be useful for all, all, all kinds of mechanical parts so you could put that over here and you could just save that as a, as a little part of a pack to use um in your model and so what you could do is take it fire one so you've copied it and now you've got another one so if we now go back in and hit the blue button i can now edit that point by point so look at this you can now make some serious changes to that shape so one shape there straight away has become two so we'll take another one copy it make this one a bit bigger um, and say for example we could say um, take one copy there and one copy there and then join them together by so push forward with the dominant hand thumbstick pick them both up hit the purple button and they're joined so they're one component there now so that can be useful if you're doing a, a, a joint or a or a, you know something like you know one of these uh, mechanical parts here um, and then we could go back and just make it into a wheel really so we can take that one again and we'll just take it over here out of the way and we could say points and now we could take by grabbing by the purple over it you could just move it like that and maybe like that and this is where you can really start playing with that shape and you can get some really cool shapes so that actually if i delete that with the red button that would be a nice replacement for that little component that we we had there so that would make a nice disc that would would work uh, on that on that uh, crab's claw that we've got there and if you want to make it a bit more complex you can take some of these parts that you've made and you could add them in to get some good surface detail and even go a bit crazy you know and start adding things in that make it look much more mechanical um you know one of the things with design like this is that visual interest is is is, is great you know the the more catching of the light so let me grab the light for you and show you when we move the light around look at how the light is making a big impact on the shapes and the 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 the, the shape language as we call it um so you know have a play with the light as well move the light around and even if you're not getting you know the look that you want it might be that you want to change the environment so blue button up to the workspace here and you could go with presets here the room itself you could go with a studio you could go with black as i do most of the time or you could go with a, a high dynamic range image you could pick, even pick your own so there's lots of options for you to to play with there and, and 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 also lots of settings with the floor you know and and all of the uh, all of the usual scene settings that you can do so plenty of options for you to have a play with and and have a have a go at you know using this tool but using it in in as many different ways as you can i generally make a little pack like this and i normally have it on another layer so i'll cover that in some more videos but if you're doing mechanical stuff like this it is mostly repeats so an example would be that leg 
is just to repeat. So if I wanted a claw at the front, I'd make it smaller and I'd just pop it in like that. So repeats make this stuff so much quicker. Um, or you might want it as some kind of a mandible or something like that. So, um, you know, having these little packs that you can pull from, super, super useful. I really hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are, please subscribe to the channel, drop us a like and you can see when we drop new videos, which is every week. <laughs>